A very good morning students we are in our regular class lecture and the subject is mining geology and today's topic of discussion is the alluvial mining and for this topic i had referred the book the course in mining geology by arugya swami and i do have made a video in the same topic in tamil and i have given the link in the description if you want you can just check it so let us get into the heading the mining so the mining is an extraction of valuable mineral from the earth's surface so in our previous lecture we had discussed about the terms in mining geology so the mining is a term that implies the extraction of valuable mineral from the earth and it can be broadly classified into three main categories that is alluvial mining open cast mining or quarrying then underground mining so if the thing that we are going to uh, break and take out the valuable mineral is say hard rock or soft sediment these are the two main uh, possibilities right so if we are going to deal with the soft sediments then that kind of mining is called as alluvial mining simply and if we are going to deal with the hard rock then you have two options whether you are going to extract the mineral deposit which is shallow depth or we are going to extract some mineral deposit which is in deep depth right so if we are dealing with the shallow depth mineral deposit then it will come under the open cast mining or simply quarrying and if we are dealing with the deeper depth mineral deposit then we it will be coming under the underground mining so the open cast mining is one where the minerals which we are going to extract will be having a direct contact with the atmosphere and the underground mining is one where the mineral will not be having any contact with the atmosphere directly right so these are three main categories and our today's main interest is the alluvial mining that is a method of extracting minerals by searching alluvial deposit so such a kind is called as alluvial mining and it can be classified as follows so we are going to see some of the methods of alluvial mining the first one is the pan and batia the second one is the rockers the third one is the long term then sluicing then hydrolicking drift mining and dredging so these are the seven topics that we are going to discuss in our today's class so let us see one after the other the first one is the pan and batia actually the pan and batia is a large shallow pan of wood or iron used for washing sand and gravel to recover gold or any valuable minerals from it right so this is what the method is actually so this is actually a mine, manual mining method where picks and shovels are used in excavating sand sandy clay etc and the pan of various shape and size are employed in recovering the valuables for a normal work the pan used is about 10 inch width with a top of 3 inch deep with a sloping size the soft alluvial material is dug up is placed in the pan or batia to wash and washed actually this process is called as panning so the first stage of operation is a gentle rocking of the pan enabling the heavier to settle at the bottom that is near the base of the sloping side due to the tilt and after this stage what happens a gentle gyratory motion to the water in the pan that helps to float the lighter materials which is carried away as the water spills out and finally as you know the specific material with the high specific gravity will be settled at the pan so we may and that can be gold or magnetite or any other heavy minerals so we may have to separate that heavy minerals uh, from the gold for that we can use a magnetic method see if magnetite is present so this is how it is working that is the pan and batia method right so simply it is uh, a washing of sediments in the pan so that is what it is actually taking place the light Uh, sediments or a material with a light uh, low specific gravity will be floated out that is uh, will be moving out from the pan and the material with the high specific gravity will be staying in the pan at the bottom and we may have to separate uh, separate it out right so the second method is the rockers this is also employed in manual mining when picks and shovels are the main equipment used The rockers consist of a metal screen mount at the bottom of a strong wooden box. So this is a very strong wooden box, and there is a uh, metal screen that is mounted at the bottom. So this is a metal screen, right? The box is made up of uh, made to stand on two semicircular iron hoops. So these are the two semicircular iron hoops which is at the bottom. So with this uh, help of this hoop, the uh, wooden box can be uh, shaked up. very well right the handle is fitted on the side of a box so this is an handle which is fixed on the side the alluvial material is poured on the metal screen so this is a metal screen where the alluvial material is poured and the metal screen will be having a size of say half to quarter inch together with the water 
and uh, with the help of the hand in the rocker is rocked from slide to side. During this process as the rocker rolls on the semicircular iron hoop, the final portion of the alluvium uh, contain the value process, passes through the screen along with the water and get into the refill box. So this is the refill box where the heavies may stay there, right? The lighter fraction flow over the refills while the heavier fraction is retained by the refill from where it is collected later on, right? So this is how the rockers work. So this is a rocker which used to shake. Right? There is a handle for shaking it, right? And here is a sieve or a screen in which the sediment along with the water is poured. So as you know, uh, when a mineral, uh, sorry, when a sediment is deposited in a river basin, it is deposited on the basis of grain size as well as the specific gravity, right? So you, if uh, there are two types of material which is having high specific gravity and low specific gravity, they may stay together at a point according to the grain size. That is, a finer high specific gravity mineral will be deposited at the same place where a bit coarser light specific gravity mineral will be staying, right? So the, what they are doing here is they will be separating the grains according to the size. So the heavy will be separated out from the screen and the finer, sorry, uh, coarser will be separated out from the screen and the finer might be passing through the screen, right? And in this finer, there are two possibilities that, that is the presence of light minerals and heavy minerals. When the water is poured through, the water will be moving the lighter one and the refills will be collecting the heavier one along with it, right? So this is the basic principle of the rockers. The next one is the long tom. This consists of an open box of 10 feet to 12 feet long from 15 to 20 inch wide at the upper end and nearly double its width in the lower end but there is an inclined screen. The slope gives, given is 1 in 12, that is the range of the slope. The finer material passes through the screen, falls on the refill box. Here, the separation of the heavy is affected. This equipment is also used where manual excavation of the soil alluvium material is carried out. So this is somewhat uh, equivalent to the rockers, but when rockers you are working, the you have to take the sample out and you have to pass it to the rockers and you have to shake it like that, right? But in long term what happens, the long term is there present, all you have to do is you have to pick the sediment and you have to pour it on the long term and the water that moving along the way that will separate the uh, valuable minerals from the gang, right? So this is how the long term works. The next one is the slow easing where the water from flowing stream is uh, actually diverted into the area occupied by the alluvium deposit through a channel and men standing on the banks of the channel shovels the place of material into the water. The material disintegrated and the muddy water now flow into the sluice box and refill box where the concentration is recovered. Thus, this is also a manual method of mining. So what they are doing is the river has been channeled out uh, towards the mineral deposit where there is alluvial deposit has been as present right and there are people used to shovel the alloy material and uh, drop it in the water where there is a sluice box is there so this sediment which is moving along with the water in the sluice box the value minerals will be recorded in the refill rivers and the lighter or unvalued minerals will be passed from that way right so this is how the sluicing is one then there is a method called hydraulicking it is a method of mining in which hydraulic giants or monitors are employed. The head of the water should not be less than 200 feet or about 8.7 lbs per square inch and the giant must be securely anchored to prevent any accident to the operation if monitor loses the stability. The hydraulic giant comprises an assembly of heavy steel pipe uh, which terminate in the tapper nozzle for throwing out the jet of water as done by the fire engine. The giant or monitor are made in a various size with the nozzles ranging from 2 to 10 inch in diameter. The quantity of water required varies from 100 cubic feet per minute to 6000 cubic feet per minute according to the strength of the sediment that is present there. The rotation of the nozzle is about a joint with a ball bearing which is held together by flanging and king bolt, right? So it is actually working in a way that the water jet from the monitor makes scallop shaped cuts in the alluvial banks, right? Where the sediments are processed as uh, mentioned in the earlier, like, earlier metal like pan and batia or rockers or any other way they can 
rework the cement which has been separated out from the deposit and the area which is under the exploitation is called as paddocks. So this is how the hydraulic method is working where a forceful water is passed to the sediment and the sediment will be moved away from its uh, location of deposition and that can be reworked to separate out the value measures. The next method is the drift mining. That is, the drift mining is more expensive than either sluicing or hydrolicking. It is employed in exploitation of placer occurring underground at depths such as a buried beach placer and ancient river channels. Four pooling is employed in advancing the working in the deposit. The main entry in most cases are the shafts. So this support is called as the four pooling where it is used for the stability of the mine and people have to go into the mine site and they have to recover it by hand like stopping so that is what it is done that is called as drift mining and the last one is the dredging this is the method this method is essentially employed for uh, mining places the dredging is a large flat bottom barge or pontoon this dredge are uh, provided with a chain of large shallow buckets which is lowered down to the bottom of the pond from the boom. The bucket brings up the soil from the bottom of the pond just as water is carried up by the Persian wheel. The buckets can be raised or lowered by rope and pulley arrangement attached to the mass. And this form of dredging is adva advantageous in clayey soil as digging is not difficult. The headline or stay wire are used instead of spud to keep the dredge anchored. Some dredging is uh, fitted with the classifier and jigs for recovering value metals. So this is actually a dredger where the bucket wheel has been moving down the, from the ship and it is moving towards the sediment. Uh, while the bucket wheels are moving up, what happens? They will bring the sediment along with the water and that will be poured in uh, jigs where the heavier and the value metals have been separated and the gang or the other fine sediments, light sediments have been uh, thrown back to the same place where it has been recovered. So this is how the dredging is uh, working. So with this I am concluding this class. If you have any doubt you can discuss in the class. Thank you.